Hey guys, JT Tran here. Now today I'm bringing back Heather. Some of you might recognize her as one of her writers and contributors and wing girls once upon a time. So in case you don't know, Heather loves Asian guys. Is that right? <laughs> well... <laughs> Like one of the most popular like t-shirts we've ever written about. Like every girl wants to know, like, where do I get the Asian boys are better t-shirt? Um, so she only dates Asian guys. Yeah, um, it's it's kind of a preference, a physical preference that I started out, you know, in preschool even. And wow. Yeah, and it just kind of went from there and it's what I'm used to now. So <laughs> cool, cool. So she has really great insight into why white girls like Asian guys, or even why some white girls don't, because you've also studied like psychology. Yes, I did. Yes. So <laughs> she's got brains with that. Um, but today we want to talk about one of our most popular articles, and I brought Heather here to discuss the 10 signs of if she likes an Asian guy. So tell me if you agree with this, okay? So this is like really popular, um, and the way it came about was I was on this flight, and I was coming home and there was this kind of like milfy blonde next to me with like fake implants. She's telling me her life story and she's got this sugar daddy and she's got this other sugar daddy. <laughs> it's like, okay. Um, and she's like giving me all these like really big signs. And I was just like, oh, oh, oh I know exactly what she's doing. Um, and I remember, so I'm like mentally listening to this, and I'm looking back also in my history of other girls, what they tried to do to show that they liked me. So first of all, I will have some girl like display some knowledge of an Asian language, whether it's Chinese or yeah. Vietnamese. <laughs> would would, would <laughs> you agree? That's a big one, I would say. Like, but, I know so many girls will put on their Facebook like, you know, oh, I speak Chinese, Korean, Japanese, like whatever, just and they'll try to throw a few words out there. So. Yeah, yeah. Even if sometimes it's a little bit, it, it's cute, but it's kind of like awkward if, she, if she, all she knows is like one phrase, <laughs> like, oh, konnichiwa, or something. <laughs> you know, ciao. It, it's interesting. It's interesting, it, it, it's, it's nice, um, although as an Asian person, it's like, you don't actually know the languages. A couple words doesn't really mean much to me, at least, but I also recognize it now that it's her way of saying, hey, I'm trying to speak to you, I want to communicate yeah. with you. <laughs> um, what else? Okay. She'll say she has Asian friends, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, this for me actually did just happen, but if yeah. I am trying to build some sort of like camaraderie or just, you know, keep a conversation going with a guy, I might mention that I have some sort of familiarity with that. Um, and that's just a way to keep it going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's her way of showing like, hey, I hang with the Asian people too, <laughs> right? Um, to show like, uh, because I think unconsciously everybody sort of recognizes that Asians tend to hang out with other Asians. So maybe it's her way of saying, hey, it's okay, I am down with your people. Right? Yeah. Uh, I will hear this, she loves martial arts. You know, that one's funny because I didn't have any personal experience with that, right? Mm -hmm. But I have a friend who's in MMA and she will, you know, post random Tony Jaw stuff. I mean, she's all about it. And this is something, because I'm not part of this commu community, mm -hmm. I didn't really know, but I see it. So right. it's definitely a thing. <laughs> I have one of my students and he is like this martial arts like champion for a while. And he would tell me that there would actually be these sort of groupies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would congregate to it and he was like saying like you know it, it was one of the easiest times for him to ever hook up because these girls are specifically looking for these types of guys and he, he could be like you know the the stereotypical kind of nerd but when you're the karate champ or kung fu champ or, or whatever and you're in that competition it's still a turn on regardless mm -hmm. uh, and you know this is a very popular one uh, number four she loves asian food Oh my god, that just speaks to me right there. Oh, yeah, that's a big one, I would say. And it depends on the kind of food. Like, it, like whatever's trendy may not necessarily be mm -hmm. a good indicator. Like, oh, if she likes sushi, everyone likes sushi, right? No. But does she go to Korean barbecue? Does she like pho? Does she like the stuff that may not be so trendy? Like, if she's especially pushing that, if she's mentioning that, no. I'd look for that one. 
I, I definitely hear a lot, and I remember when sushi was not that popular. Now, especially here in Los Angeles, everyone yeah. is through <laughs> eat sushi, but in other places or more like small town places mm -hmm. that it's not as popular. I mean, I noticed when she'll specifically say she eats sushi or like, I know how to eat with chopsticks, right? She lets you specifically know that she likes your food and she won't embarrass you. <laughs> um, although that's something that I enjoy doing. I will take white girls to like an Asian restaurant. I'm like, girl, you better know how to eat with chopsticks. Do not shame my house. <laughs> Pressure. Yeah, and that's just like you can do like, you, you, you teach her, right? You teach her a little bit of, of the food, how to eat. It's kind of a fun thing. You can play around, tease her, be like, uh, put the rubber band on as if she was a child. <laughs> um, now this, might get a little bit annoying for some people. Number five is she knows more about your country, the motherland, than you do. Like, I'll get this more like the college girls that are like Asian studies or Chinese studies. <laughs> it's just like, she's like a know-it-all. Like, I appreciate the fact that she studied it, but it's like, girl, like. <laughs> Calm down, right? Yeah. No, well, I did meet um, a Korean adoptee. He mm -hmm. had just recently moved here and, you know, we were talking and I mean, I knew more because mm -hmm. he was straight from like, you know, a very predominantly white area. Yeah. Um, and even though he had gone to like Korean school, he had done all these things. I mean, I only know some operative phrases, but even I knew how to speak more than him. Mm -hmm. So in those situations, while I know that some are very eager to tell you about how much they know, because they really just like you and they really just want to get a conversation going, Sometimes it is a little much, so I like to pull back the reins. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I mean, for those of you girls that are watching this and trying to figure out, okay, like how do I show that you know, I'm attracted to him, I'm interested in his culture, you don't want to come off as a know-it-all because he's just going to embarrass him, especially in your friend's case who is an adoptee. He's going to feel like this really awkward, like, mm -hmm. you know, because he never really probably felt that stronger of a bond to his motherland because he is adopted. Um, and then some, uh, some people are just more whitewash, they didn't learn about that country. I had to make a specific uh, action when I was in college to learn about Vietnam because my parents didn't really teach me anything about it. They taught me like the language and everything like that. But it was only until I was in college I'm like, I kind of made this decision like I should know more about my culture and then I studied it like, you know, I bought like all the, these textbooks. Um, but if you know more about China, Japan, like all the history and the traditions, like and, and it, your academic knowledge is greater than his. Like, no one likes to know it all, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> number six is a fun one. She's a gamer or an anime lover. She'll make sure that, she, <laughs> that she, like, she'll say, oh, I, I love Final Fantasy, or I go to Comic-Con and I cosplay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say that yes, on both of those counts, uh, more on the anime, right? Mm -hmm. But I think gaming as we go on is becoming more acceptable for girls. Mm -hmm. So it depends on what type of games she's trying to throw out there. So like if she is mentioning more games like Final Fantasy, stuff mm -hmm. like that, it's... Like I mean, the JRPGs. Yeah, it's kind of more akin to anime versus right. like as she's saying like, you know, my favorite game is like Call of Duty. That's a completely different community too. Mm -hmm. So I think it depends on what game she's throwing out there. So. Yeah, although like honestly as an Asian person, I I kind of avoid not necessarily the the, the gamers because you know once upon a time I used to play games a lot um, so that's fine it's like the girls that are like anime and then, I, then I'm like warning signs just in case you girls are watching that um, and that's from my perspective it, it seems that anime lovers not all of them I'm just saying in, in my experience I've run into these kind of extremes where there's a certain kind of fetishization of the cult of the Asian culture um, and we're more like a character in their minds or maybe they're sort of appropriating Asian culture um, and I've encountered this and this is kind of like the oddly the reverse uh, where she'll cosplay but she has no intention of ever dating an Asian guy it's kind of this weird extreme uh, so be moderate uh, your love because you don't want to scare them off okay moderation is key yes uh, <laughs> Uh, number seven uh, has become more popular uh, in my experience when, from what I've seen is she loves Asian music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Especially like Gangnam style, right? <laughs> As like white girls first, like the majority of white girls first introduction to any kind of Asian music was Gangnam style. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, like you knew though more about uh, other kind of Asian pop like before. Like in your experience growing up and other girls, what kind of music did they listen to? Well, if they actually did like Asian guys, I think mid 2000s we all kind of started on Japanese okay. rock, right? Right. And that was more of a scene before K-pop really came in. And so like for me it was late 2000s, all of a sudden K-pop was a bigger deal for me. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the guys there, I mean, how many K-pop boy bands are there? <laughs> like, they, they're just beautiful, right? So that's, I think a lot of girls do find their way into liking Asian guys through that. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously these boy band members are chosen for their aesthetics. Uh, and, and that's great because at least you have a certain sort of role role model. I, I guess not like these girls have a certain type of you know guy that they go for. Although again, on the other extreme, you'll have these girls that will be like, "Oh, I expect you to look like a K-pop person with like you know that comb over, that comb down, and um, got to moderate that, girls. All right, not everybody looks like a K-pop star." So. Number eight is a, a kind of a fun one for a guy, especially if you're not used to being complimented. Although, again, don't want to take it too extreme if you're a girl. So number eight, she'll compliment your Asian attributes. Like, oh, I love your dark black hair or your brown eyes or, you know, your yellow skin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a great ego boost, right? But you don't, again, as a guy, maybe you're not used to this, but at a certain point, it might feel like you're a piece of meat to her. Now, have you ever treated an Asian guy like a piece of meat? <laughs> well, I mean, it does depend on how, how well you know the guy, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm never gonna like come out of the gate saying stuff like, you know, alluding to physical attributes, especially Asian-specific ones, because that, I mean, that can be taken the wrong way, especially right. if you don't know the person. But yeah, I might compliment, like, hey, your eyes are pretty, but I'm not gonna say your monoliths are pretty, right? That's just <laughs> Your weird. epicanthic foes yeah. are epic. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, da -da. and number nine, I like this one because there's a thing that I'll, I'll do with it. Um, she'll say how, how beautiful interracial HAPA babies are. <laughs> and one of the things I'll do is like, you know, I'll be joking around with her. It's like, just think, if you and I got married, we'd have the most inter beautiful interracial babies ever. Could you imagine how gorgeous they'd be? Or you could like kind of, um, quote the, the various scientific studies that say that you know mixed babies are the most like genetically the most beautiful and it's something that I, I like to kind of plant in there uh, that she starts thinking about being impregnated by an Asian man. Well, uh, I will say that like a lot of girls what they'll do is like if they, I mean even if you just see like a hot stranger you've already planned your life with this guy. Yeah. You may not see him again but whatever it's fun to imagine. So yeah. I'm sure a lot of guys imagine the flip side like oh man she's super hot and you know mm -hmm. imagine taking that somewhere too. That's kind of a girl fantasy right there. Sure sure. <laughs> um, and I think sometimes girls will bring this up about, you know, the fact that they appreciate interracial babies is they want to let you know as an Asian guy that they're receptive to, you know, at least the idea of having a family. Because I know like here there's a lot of women that I encounter that are like very career oriented and they're not really looking to have a family, which is fine, you know, but uh, I also think that like, you know, I think girls know that in general Asians have a very strong tradition when it comes to family rearing mm -hmm. and passing on or legacy. And finally, this is probably one of the biggest things I hear if she's really into Asian guys and she's really trying to hit on you, um, she'll say, I've dated an Asian guy before. <laughs> Right. I, I hear this all the time from Asian guys like, oh, white girls don't like Asian guys, black girls don't like Asian guys, they, they only date blah, 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 blah. So um, it's her way of letting you know that she's receptive, she's not resistant to the idea. So she's like saying, oh, um, you know, in high school or college I dated a Vietnamese guy. That's a huge signal. I mean, that's not, that's coming out of the blue. So she's bringing up intentionally to let you know that there is some romantic, you know, opportunities at play. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that because a lot of, a lot of Asian guys that I've spoken to, if they say that they have hardships dating like white women, the first thing is like, you know, oh man, like there's all these stereotypes surrounding like Asian guys and I've got to mm -hmm. overcome these negative stereotypes. If she's already dated an Asian guy before, yeah, <laughs> that's like half your battle done. Yeah. Now you gotta be charming, right? Yeah, so now she's seeing you as what you need to be seen as, which mm -hmm. is a person. So you've already, you know, you've already crossed that bridge. Right. So, so 
out of these 10, you know, uh, signals, uh, what, what have you done when it comes to signaling to an Asian guy that you're attracted to him? Or if there are other things that we haven't talked about, like, what do you do? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> like, throw out your hair. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I have been with my current boyfriend for the last mm -hmm. four years, so I gotta say, like, I'm, I haven't been giving out any IOIs recently, right? Right. But just keeping the conversation going at any, any cost is really, if a girl's interested in you, she's going to do that. And so she might throw out any of these things. Me personally, I will mention that I'm, you know, I love like Korean barbecue, stuff like okay. that. I will mention that, yeah, I, I have had Asian dating experiences just because like that is something that kind of builds that bridge. Like mm -hmm. here's, some, here's some things that I have learned from dating Asian guys. Like I didn't know anything about Gundam before Asian guys, mm -hmm. right? And now it's like, I got that theme song stuck in my head all the time. So like, just little things like that. Like there are little connectors here and there that she'll try to bring up and I will do that too, so. Cool, very cool. All right guys, I hope you found that educational. These 10 signs are things that I have experienced. So if a girl is sending you any of these signals, she's into you, all right? So don't be afraid. Remember, be successful because you're Asian, not in spite of it. All right. Uh, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for our next video. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys.